G'day. Early last year in 2024, I had the pleasure to review the Lenovo Legion Go. Now that was a very innovative and unique handheld. What it had was a detachable controllers, which no other handheld had, and not only that, it actually, one of the controllers can actually be converted into a mouse, and that was really crazy cool. Now, in 2025, Lenovo has added to the Legion family the Lenovo Legion Go S. Now, this is a more ergonomic and more portable version of the Legion Go. Now, it's had some changes. We've actually got some updated hardware, but more importantly, we've got some different ergonomics and also the weight. Now, the Legion Go, the original, that was around about 860 grams. This one here is about 760 grams. So it's about 100 grams less. Now, you may not think that might be a much, but after hours of playing, you may actually find this is actually, and like I said, more ergonomic, is being a more portable. You actually might find this one can game a lot longer than original Legion Go. Now, one of the updated hardware on this is, of course, the processor. Now, the original one had the AMD Ryzen Z1. That was amazing, really powerful, and actually very cool processor. In the Legion Go S, this is actually running the new AMD Ryzen Z2 Go processor. Now this was specifically designed for handheld and it runs off the Zen 4 architecture with the RDNA 3 graphics, which means this thing is powerful to play your triple A games and it's just smooth. It's just been wonderful experience so far. Now, I am actually again blown by not only the Z1, but this Z2 Go processor. Wow, it is not only cooler, more efficient. It has a lot of performance using the four nanometers. So AMD, you've done a fantastic job and AMD and Lenovo, you've done a wonderful job in integrating into this. Looking at temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurement, the ambient temperature room was 19 degrees Celsius. Just to give you a rough idea of how hot or how cool this device is, my hand was averaging around about 35 degrees Celsius at this room temperature. While it's in productivity, while it's pretty much office type of work, web browsing or streaming videos, the hottest area measure a maximum of 42 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan, it was just whispering at maximum of 35 decibels. So you barely even hear the fan. While it's in the heat of gaming with the performance mode and smart fan controlled engaged, it didn't really reach any hotter than 41 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan, it stayed very impressively restrained at 41 decibels, which is really not that loud at all. And when I unleashed the fan in its full fury at full fan mode to chase every ounce of performance, it measured in a maximum temperature of 43 degrees Celsius. Now, as for the fan noise, it did hum at about 50 decibels. So it is audible, but it's not that crazy at all. Perhaps the most astonishing of all is where it doesn't heat the rear. At its warmest, measured in a maximum of 31 degrees Celsius. Now as for the hand grips, it pretty much remained untouched by warmth at all, which is very reassuring. This is the most surprising of all, is that the airflow, even though it can be strong, it is actually cool all the time. I've never really felt it warm, even in performance or gaming mode. I've never really felt it warm air coming out of that at all. Now this is a remarkable and rare feat. The display is a large eight inch wide ultra extended graphics array, which has expert ratio of 16 by 10 and has the capability of 120 Hertz variable refresh rate. This is a gorgeous display. It is a glossy finish to it as most of it because it has touch ability with it. So that makes it a lot easier to work on a smaller screen, but this is a, really gives you that nice immersion because of just the actual portable sides of it. Now it has a brightness of 500 nits. It's got dual front facing speakers, which reach a modest peak of 84.2 decibels. Now this is loud enough for what I say indoor environment, but if you're in an outdoor environment, I definitely suggest having headphones for it. Even though volume isn't its 
strongest weapon, I can see that Lenovo placed their efforts into the sound quality. It has unexpected richness, clean acoustics, subtle reverb, and even a hint of bass. It's balanced with clarity, it's full body, and I never really felt it sound tinny at all. Housing the Legion True Strike controllers, in its core lies the Hall Effect RGB joysticks. Unlike common joysticks, they glide frictionless, untouched by wear and tear, banishing the creepy shadows of stick drift and dead zones that plague lesser devices. You can also unleash mighty combos with the large pivot D-pad. With a lighter build than the original Legion Go and noticeably larger hand grips, the Legion Go S is remarkably comfortable to hold. And for the extended gaming sessions, I had less hand fatigue and it's a genuine pleasure to use. I know the Legion Go, the original, they actually had some more extra buttons. I really didn't use it in the original, but now we've just only got two, which is really good because that's all I really, most of my games, that's all I really, and these are customizable and they're really easy to hold and press where they are now. Now, only that, we also have another two more buttons on here, which is the left and right, and these also can actually change their actual depth or how much you can actually trigger by actually changing the depth so it, then just a nice little flick of switch and now it's actually very shallow depth or basically recoil and this is actually pretty good for those who have more action-packed sort of games or first person shooting games that's where we're very good and then you can go back down to the lower release and that gives you that nice deep long pushes now now this i for me this is what i'd like to use because that's more really for me i like having the like long throws uh, but the one that you will actually find this is advantage for would be for racing games because i use this for throttling and uh brake so that's actually very nice for the analog so you can actually do that so that's just what i would use and that's what the two things so it's nice that you have the ability to customize those there here now besides that we have some nice different ports here so at the bottom here we've got the micro sd card reader so you can expand more than anything else that's great to have or give it some extra expansion here for storage that's really good and it can be hidden away i love that now on top here we've got the headphone jack two usb four ports now they usb type c ports and they both support power delivery and this actually gives you expansion which is really gives you to the next point here is that this can support third-party docks or adapters so it makes it really good you can actually dock this and because this here is the windows version now you can dock it and basically you can actually use your productivity you can use for office besides your gaming so so once you finish with gaming you can just dock it in not only can you charge it but you can also expand to having external monitors keyboards and other external devices even ssds wonderful wonderful to be able to do that i really love the ability when you have usb-c and you can actually dock these in and then become basically a computer here there are actually two versions of the lenovo legion go s now there is a windows version which is the one i've got here and there's also the lenovo legion go s which is the steam os version now what would the difference really be now with the steam os it's kind of like just having your steam in big picture mode so steam os is just a more condensed version gives you the console like version of it and you don't have any of that it probably is a bit more efficient probably runs a little bit better this windows 11 version of the lenovo legion go s you can install the steam os as well but it's not a dual boot system, so you have to choose one or the other. Now, there is a guide on how to install Steam OS on this Legion Go S on the Windows version. I'll put in the link in the description below the guide how to do that. Now, which one would you choose? That's up to you. Just giving you an idea that if most of your library is on Steam, I would recommend going with the Steam OS. It's more optimized for the platform and gives a cleaner console-like experience out of the box. Or you got Legion Go S. Windows version, which gives you a bit more versatility that you can actually run the other game launches and also you can actually, if you want to roll to the Steam OS, this has the ability to do that. Now both are pretty much priced the same, so definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. Here's the result of the benchmarks performed on the Legion Go S.
Pass Mark, City Bench 2024, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Cross Mark, Crystal Disc Mark, Geek Bench 6, Procon Office, Lux Mark, Go Mark, Blender, Eugene Engine, and some gaming benchmarks like Cyberpunk 2077, Fire Cry 6, Fonza 5, F1 2024 and Wukong Black Myth Really cool, I don't really feel the heat from this thing, it's just amazing The combination of Lenovo and AMD It is a top notch job on this beautiful wonderful device, the Lenovo Legion Go S Easy to recommend The only thing I would say is, I just kind of wish that like the original Legion Go, it actually had a kickstand. That's kind of what I'm missing from this is just give me a little kickstand. I know it's going to add a little weight, but just when I'm a lot, I do use this like a normal Windows. I kind of I had to find a place to like put it. Luckily, I've got this one, which is for my tablet. And I kind of had to like kind of find that. But when I'm out and about, that's not an easy thing to do. I've got to find another sort of, I've been using my sunglasses or something to try and prop it up and stuff like that, just to watch things and everything, because it's just a nice, beautiful eight inch screen. So it gives you multi-purpose and it's so easy to just chuck it in your bag. And it's just a wonderful device here. Now, I hope you find this video informative, enjoyed it. If you did, even support my channel, smash that like button for me, share this video, it does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.